Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here. Today's topic is what? It's the serial input parallel output. But before that, uh, I told you in the last lecture to draw that uh, wave from yourself. But then I said, let me draw it. All right. So let's say this is my reference line. Well, it's not a line, but whatever it be, right? So this I'm drawing is a clock pulse. Two, three, four, and so on. All right. Now what do you have? This is the first falling edge, the second falling edge, third falling edge, and the fourth falling edge. So for Q3, have a look. Q3. Q3 initially was 0, let's say. And when the first falling edge arrives, it comes to 1. For the second falling edge, it comes to 0. And then goes... Uh, I for the third and also for the fourth. Alright. So yes, it's fine. For Q2, what do you have? Q2 is uh, 0, then 1, 0, and then 1. It's 0 for the first row, yes? 0, 1, 0, and then 1. Then about Q1. So this Q1 is 0, 0, 0 and then 1, alright? Initially it was 0, for the first falling edge it's 0, 0, 0, finally 1, right? And then for Q0, the last, so we have a triple 0, 1 again for this as well. So we have a 0, 0, 0, 1. So have a look at the outward. Uh, I have a mistake. One, two, three, four falling edges. Zero, zero, one, zero. In Q3, I have a mistake. Q1, I have a mistake. Have a look. Zero, zero, one, zero, right? So there's Q1 over here. Zero, zero. This is one. And then zero. So now have a look at the output. What do we have? This is one. This is one. This is zero. And this is one. So one, one. 0, 1 has been stored at the output. So that was the clock diagram which I was telling you to draw yourself. Now to today's lecture. So for that, let me remove this first. So the next mode is the serial input parallel output mode. I hope we don't have a double L. CPO. Okay. So let me take three bits so that it's easy for us to understand, right? It is easy, but let's say more easy. Okay. This is now D2, Q2, and D1. Q1. The clock pulse and the clear signal that is by default you can also mention it yourself but let me just draw it so that we don't forget it. This is the clock pulse given simultaneously to all of them like a synchronous counter. This is the clear signal. Let's say we want to store a 3-bit data. What do you have? Now for serial input, parallel output, all the three terminals are also exposed, all right, like this. We have access to D3. Q3 is connected to D2, but we also have access to it as a direct output, right? And Q2 is connected to D1 internally, but we also have access to it directly like this. And this is Q1. In the previous uh, video that we saw, in the CSO mode, the serial input, serial output mode, we didn't have access to this Q3, Q2, that they were internally connected. <clears throat> but in this case, we have. Let's say we want to store a 3-bit number, for example, a 101. 1, 0, 1. For example, okay? So what would be the values? 
the clock pulse and then we have a Q3, Q2, Q1. So let's say initially the clock, the, the, the clear signal is applied and the flip-flops are resetted. Initially, whatever be the value of the clock pulse when the clear signal is applied. That is the clear is made zero, right? So all of them are zero. This is when the clear, let's, let me write it over here, when the clear is made zero. For all the rest cases, the clear is one. So the flip-flop would be operating normally. Okay. Now for the first clock pulse, what do we give at the input? We give this least significant bit just as the previous video. The least significant bit is fed at the data input, alright? So what is this data input now? 0. Previously Q3 was 0, so D2 would be 0 and D1 would be 0. So the output we have is 1, 0, 0, right? With the first clock pulse we have a 1, 0, 0, alright? Now, for the second clock pulse, the clear is also 1 at this stage. Now you have the next bit applied, right? So the next bit is 0. So we apply it over here 0. Now this one is connected to D2, so this one would appear here. This 0 is connected over there, so this would appear here. Now at the output, for the second clock pulse, we have 0. We have 1 and we have 0. So we have a 0. 1, 0. For the third clock pulse, the most significant bit remains. This is the most significant bit. This is applied, alright? This is for the third falling edge or the third clock pulse. So this one when applied over here. So what happens? Have a look. 1, this 0 is connected to D2. So you have a 0. This one is connected over here. So you have a 1. At the output you have a 1, 0, 1. Because of the D flip-flop, this is 1, this would be 0, this would be 1. 1, 0, 1. Alright, and about the D flip-flop, I believe you know in a great detail that when the input is 1, the output is 1. When the input is 0, the output is 0. It is generally a buffer, okay? If you don't know, you need to watch the previous videos in detail about the D flip-flop. Here, when I reach the registers, I assume that you know each and every point about flip-flops that I'm seeing over here. So now have a look. 1, 0, 1 have been stored. It was a 3-bit data. It required 3 clock pulses to store it. Right? So which means n-bit data would require n number of clock pulses to store it. Isn't it so? Yes. And how to retrieve it in this case? retrieve how to use it how to extract it from the stored memory so have a look we i told you that we directly have access over here so the direct access is that here we have directly a one here we have a zero and here we have a one directly which means that we retrieve it directly they are directly available to us all right no clock pulse is required. No clock pulses. Or nothing is required. So that's about it. That's about the serial input parallel output mode. In the next videos, we'll be using the 4-bit register because the 3-bit just uh, came to an end very quickly. All right. So we should have some practice of it. So we'll be using the 4-bit again. I, I use this 3-bit that you would be wondering why am I using 4-bit again and again. Why not a 5-bit? A 5-bit I am not using because on this board I don't have that much space to explain 5-bit. And 3-bit is <laughs> just takes little time. So 4-bit is the maximum that I can draw over here and it takes a good time. So that's why I use it. So that's all about this. In the next lecture we see either the parallel input serial output or the parallel input parallel output mode. These two modes are remaining. So see you there very soon inshallah. Till then take care. Goodbye.